And well, with China improving its trade relations with Africa, it seems that India might be following suit. The India-Africa relationship is witnessing a pickup in trade volumes, and CNBC Africa's Godfrey Matiswa spoke with TCA Ranganathan, who's the chairman and MD of Exim Bank of India, to find out where these volumes are coming from. So when you're talking about China and India in the same breath, one must realize the difference between the two economies. China is a public sector, state sector driven economy. Yeah. India is a private sector driven economy. So activities of Indian companies would be private sector entrepreneur instincts and their attitude towards trade would be depending on the corporate story of each particular company. Yeah. In form of actual numbers, Indian exports and Indian imports from Africa have grown by a multiple of five times, six times in the last 12 years. Okay. It's grown very rapidly. We used to enjoy a share of one... From a low base. From a very low base. We used to have a share of what 1%, 1.5% with African trade. Now we have got, I think, a 7% share in African trade as far as Africa is concerned. The preponderance of trade benefit is in favor of Africa right now in the sense that India has a negative trade balance with Africa. Mm. We had conducted a very detailed analytical study of Indian trade patterns with Africa, and we are releasing a booklet in this course of this during the, on the, on the sidelines of the AFDV seminar. Yep. We are organizing an India Day event, which is a partnership event between Africa Development Bank and Exim Bank of India to showcase what Indian corporates are doing in Africa. Yep. So we're releasing a research report on that, where we are pat What is that showing? That is showing that Indian exports have grown, Indian imports have grown faster, but the total trade has jumped up, as I mentioned, by a huge factor. Yeah. And now it's about 7% of the trade of the African industry over there. Yeah. And we think that the progress can only be in the upward direction, yeah. because there are huge potentialities where Africa can take advantage of Indian products, because Indian technology is adoptive, yeah. it is affordable, and it's value for money. Yeah. So let's talk about the type of uh, products and services that you're seeing that you are financing. Which ones are those and to which countries? The forms, the Indian trade in form of exports, I will distinguish between Indian exports to Africa. Right. Then I will also distinguish between exports and Indian investments in Africa. A lot of Indian investment is coming into manufacturing in Africa. Mm -hmm. And Indian companies have set up steel plants, what are called railway siding plants, pharma plants, textile plants, tractor ma machinery, as tractor assembly plants, truck assembly plants in African soil yeah. for production and sale within Africa. Right. So there are two parts of the story. One is the Indian exports. The Indian exports which are taking place are form of, one is pharmaceuticals, textiles, a lot of machinery comes, equipments, motor parts, motor vehicles, predominantly trucks, or ships, in fact, the drilling, some of the drilling vehicles, they right. all come from India. The Indian imports is, quite a bit of it is oil, but quite a bit of it is other, or then cotton and other things also is growing. Yeah, yeah. And some Indian investment has taken place in yarn manufacturing in Africa. And some companies are going even for fabric manufacturing, the whole value chain they are trying to develop. Because, as I mentioned, the Indian story is a private entrepreneur-driven story. Yeah. It's a private sector story. Yeah. And a private sector entrepreneur looks to maximize his corporate profits yeah. irrespective of nationality. Yeah. He yeah. is nationality independent. And wherever he sees convenience in form of manufacturing, yeah. he goes in there. Yeah. And a private sector entrepreneur always goes alone no, for sure. and he recruits local talent, right. he builds capacity locally because that is a cost effective way of Absolutely. doing operations. Absolutely. Taking an expatriate yeah. would be a very expensive way of investment. Indeed. So they don't like expatriates, they like to look. Yeah. I, mean, I see you're making that very big distinction between India and China. Yes, because but you asked the question. Indeed. Okay, now, but let's talk about uh, what, what needs to be fixed in Africa in your view to try and get uh, investments faster than they have been growing. You advise, of course, uh, the Indian companies on your side. No, we have seen a lot of growth in investments and a lot of African countries are very proactive in trying to seek investments. That's why we're having this event called Partnership Event, which, sure. which was basically authored by 
African Development Bank. They said that India must come and make a presentation. So we responded, there is no India there, are Indian companies, so we can get the Indian private sector companies sure. who are already in Africa to talk about what they are doing. Right. And this event we are having on 30th to talk about what Indian corporates are already doing there, yeah. their plans for future investments in Africa, mm -hmm. in the value chain.